In this video, we're talking all about that uh, Universal Kid Park over in Texas. A lot of information dropped the other day about this park. The logo, the name, we got a new concept art. The Italiano and I, we're going to break it down, talk about it up next on OG55. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of Orange Grove 55. I got the Italiano with me once again. We're talking about that Universal Kids Resort. Yes, that is the name, Universal Kids Resort. Uh, but before we break all this down, the concept art, the name, the logo, all that good stuff, I want to introduce my brother, my co-host, my co-pilot here on the channel, the Italiano. Welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me on, brother. And it's again, it's always glad to be on talking Disney, Universal, Knott's Berry Farm, whatever we're talking about, whether it's the studio side, the park side, it's always a good time uh, discussing all this with you. So glad to be on. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You can now also find me on uh, Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. There we go. Let's dive right into the festivities. All right. Give me just a second, sir. Let's dive into this, man, because there is a lot to discuss here. Okay. So let's start off with this is the new logo. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I, somebody tweeted at me actually. Uh, I, was it? I think it was at me or or maybe mm -hmm. one of my retweets. I'm not really sure, but I uh, made a joke saying uh, underneath this logo saying uh, brought to you by PBS, which hey, honestly, spot on, right? <laughs> Pretty spot yeah. on. But this is the new logo and this is the new name of this of the kitty park over there in Texas. It's called Universal Kids Resort. Now, for those of you at home that are not aware of what this is, this is Universal's answer to like Legoland. OK, so it's a kid based kind of a kid centric park, small. I think it's only like 30 acres, if I'm not mistaken. Um, our um, our friend Theme Park Wizard was telling me it's about five hundred and fifty million dollars. This park will cost Universal. So that's kind of where we're at. But we'll, st we'll start with the logo. We'll start with the name. Uh, George, thoughts. Um, do you really want them? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, this looks very cheap, very generic. It's I'm not saying it has to be something that's like wow and spectacular, but at least give some sort of notion that you are uh, you're you're proud of this project. You know that you 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 have high hopes for this. I mean, just just the title, the title alone completely throws me off. It's just like, hey, who wants to go to Universal Kids? You know, it's like it doesn't it doesn't roll off the tongue well. And you, you need something that's kind of catchy, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. that's something that's intriguing. And and even just the the uh, the, the logo, the, the the color scheme, it's just I, it's just it's it's, it's, it's bad, man. It's it's rough, dude. It's rough. And I know I know there's going to be people saying like, oh, OG just hates everything Universal. It's not true, man. Like there's a Universal does a lot of great stuff. We, we were sitting here like just like two weeks ago fawning over the uh, the dark universe stuff being built over their epic universe. You know, um, on Twitter, I was talking about how gorgeous the new entryway uh, for during the holidays for Universal Studios Hollywood look with the lights. Absolutely breathtaking. But you know what? This is not it. This is not it. Now, number one, I, the name is ridiculous. Okay. And a lot of people are doing mental gymnastics to sort of justify the name. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's called kids. It's Universal Kids. So, you know, it, it, it makes it very clear who they're marketing this park to. It's like, yeah, but you don't need to do that. Legoland is the same kind of park. Legoland is a kid park. They didn't have to add kids across the front of it, Lego kids, to make families understand it's for kids. No, it, Lego was not lazy. They were not creatively lazy. What Lego did was they called it, they actually came up with a decent name, Legoland, and they marketed the park for kids. There is no reason that Universal couldn't do the same, to come up with a creative, clever name and market the park to kids. You don't need to splash 
kids across the title for families to understand. Families aren't stupid, okay? They understand Legoland is for kids and they will understand that this is for kids, even with a different name. So that's a that's that whole idea that, well, they kind of had to because they got to let people know it's for kids. Now, nah, you know, look, there's a lot of products out there for kids that don't do this. Another example, you take, you take, uh, you know, like, um, like cartoons for when, when we grew up, right? Mm -hmm. Disney afternoon for kids. I mean, the Disney afternoon was marketed for kids. See, it was catchy. It has that catchy t t yeah, to it, it. It was a great, it was a great name. It didn't have kids written all over it. Right. It wasn't like you could, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. Like you can call this thing something else and have it very clear. It's for kids. So I'm sorry, people can make uh, excuses, justify it, do all the mental gymnastics you want. This is very, very, uh, this is creatively bankrupt, essentially. Now, in terms of the logo, I got to agree with the commenter on my Twitter when he when, when he was saying brought to you by PBS. This looks like something you would see on PBS, a logo for some kid's show on PBS. It really does. It actually really does. Like every time, like he actually beat me to it because I was really going to text you and say, PBS called they want their logo back because yeah. it was just because it does remind <sighs> me of that like anytime I watched anything with the public broadcasting whether it was um I'm gonna date myself but anytime like I would watch Arthur or uh like Mr. Rogers Neighborhood or something like that these were like the things that would pop up and this whole thing and I know we'll dive into it much yeah. more once you bring up the map and everything the concept uh map but it just seems like this whole entire project feels rushed by universal well well a lot of people are sort of like like apologizing for this thing right well yeah you know it doesn't look that great or whatever but it's for kids it's like you know what i'm sorry that's not an excuse in the 90s we had animation mm -hmm. um that was that was uh that was directed or whatever you want to say for tv shows i don't know i guess you would say directed by steven spielberg or produced, I'm sorry, by Steven Spielberg. You had Animaniacs and Tiny Toons. Steven Spielberg, okay? Those shows were for kids, but yet they were very high quality, okay? You had the best director on the planet producing those shows, okay? So don't tell me that, you know, just because it's a kid's thing that you have to, like, water it down and talk down to the audience. That's hot. That's baloney. You have a, you have a show right now, Bluey, one of the most popular things right now on Disney+. Plus. Really, for, for kids, Bluey is king right now. And... Mm -hmm. From what I'm hearing, I've never seen it, but I've seen a lot of people talk about how the writing on that show is really, really good. Again, quality show, quality product, great writing, and it's for kids. So you know what, Universal? I'm sorry. Just because it's for kids doesn't give you carte blanche to just, to do a cheap product. And, and and these fans out there making this making this excuse that like oh well it's for kids so therefore you can you can phone it in it's like why you know you have a lot of great quality kids stuff out there in the market so why don't why don't you go ahead and and, and put the same effort into this universal I, I'm sorry that's not an excuse not one iota and this is the park that's gonna follow up Epic Universe I know mm -hmm. it's two different products two different demos but still this is the park this is the direction this is the budgeted direction they're going in after Epic Universe. Uh First thing I just have to say, you have to clip that little moment you had because that has to be like a TikTok thing. I'm sorry, that was great. <laughs> what the car uh, blanche? The car blanche. That that was just phenomenal because you just said it like so, like elegantly. Like you were just like all into it. It was so perfect. Um, but to Universal's credit, okay. When for U Epic Universe, Epic right. Universe title, perfect. It's catchy. It makes right. you want to look into it. They makes you want to invest into it. The the um the logo uh, looks right. really cool. So again, and when people use the term, okay, well, even if you look at Disneyland, because people always say, oh, isn't Disneyland should shouldn't it be more geared towards kids? Why do adults just go and and have fun? Shouldn't you have a family? Shouldn't you have kids? Okay, so these are the same people that are saying and claiming and quoting Disney, Disneyland, Walt Disney World, whatever, Disney in general, is just for kids. Okay, so then when you take Disney and you're holding them to a high expectation, so then why can't we hold Universal to that high expectation even though it's just for kids? Yeah. I don't no, get I well, a kid park, yeah, exactly, dude. You put your name on something, it should be quality, okay? And that goes for Disney as well. That absolutely goes for Disney as well. And this is what I've been saying where, and I, and people disagree with me, and that's fine, okay? I mean, 
res I respectfully disagree with people when they say that this park is not going to damage the Universal brand. I think it absolutely will. Um, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, when you create a lesser product like this in the theme park space, you're setting yourself up to be another Six Flags, Cedar Fair kind of park. And that's fine. That's what those companies do. But Universal, in my opinion, has always been a higher standard. It's been sort of, um, you know, the, you know, Disney's, you know, biggest competition. You know, they've, they've always been a higher standard, I think, than a lot of these uh, regional amusement parks. Now they're diving into the regional stuff. So I'm sure this is this is not the end. So you're going to see a lot of these probably all over the country, assuming if this thing does well. So you're watering down the, the product because you're you're creating a lesser quality thing. And people look, I get it. We're in this theme park bubble and our minds go, well, this is the different demographic. So it's, it's different. And, you know, it's not different. The family will that goes to this park will not think like that. The family that goes to this park will walk through those gates and see the universal logo everywhere and go, oh, this is a universal park. So it's half assed. And it's a universal park. And that's their impression of universal. The families and everybody that lives in Texas, this will be their idea, their first impression of what universal does in the theme park space. And it's a big deal. And it really is. And honestly, for Texas, there were talks of people saying, oh, Disneyland should open or Disney should open up another park in Texas. You right. know, they have so much land, so much room. Universal kind of beat them to it. And they kind of dropped the ball on that because not saying that this is a bad thing, but why couldn't this just be one little one little piece of concept of a much bigger resort? Why well, just stop at this? Well, I think and I got a DM from somebody the other day. I got a DM from somebody the other day. And actually, you know what? I'll read the DM, but I'm not going to say the person's name because I don't know if the person wants their name out there. Give me just a second. I want I want to read this DM uh, from her because I think she made a fantastic point. Okay. And it's it's about it's exactly what you were saying. Uh, give me just a second, sir. Mm -hmm. I do apologize for the wait. Just bear with me for a moment or two. And um, on, and honestly, I have to say with this, and we'll get into this as well. This original little piece of concept art, I have to say, really isn't too bad. It, of what I'm looking at, I mean, the it's original, yeah, the original, yes. Okay, so this person uh, DM me and said here, it's really a point of, uh, <laughs> I'll start over. It's really a point of frustration for me because this is literally where I live and long rumored place that Disney may build. So I feel they are kind of wasting the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I have two kids, but a kid's park is so limiting. Even with people with kids, one of my kids is a teen. So probably would be bored. And it's something that's set to grow out of in a couple of years for any age. I'm not sure what the price points will be, but who wants to spend big money for your family of six when two of the kids fit the genre? One is a teen and one won't care. And mom, dad, and grandma basically can't do anything. She's right. She's That's absolutely right. Spot on. So spot it would they would have been better off creating an all-ages park. You build another epic universe-style park here, Island Adventure Park. This is a perfect spot. Texas is a fantastic location for something like that. It's right in between California and Florida. It's it's an, it's enough distance to justify its existence, basically, right? Universal would make hand over fist doing something like that. This is a wasted opportunity. Now, th there are there is a place for this kind of park. I think this kind of kitty park might have been a better idea as an ancillary extra add-on for the current resort in Florida. So mm -hmm. kind of like what they do with like the water parks over there in Disney World and right. Universal. This could have been a mini like ancillary park over there. It, you tack it on to your overall vacation. But a standalone thing, I think the gal who DM me is absolutely correct. Now, this is the this is the original artwork. Okay. Now, take I want everyone to look at this artwork. Look look at what we got here, okay? Look at the look at the entrance. You got the nice water feature. Beautiful hotel at the entry, the DreamWorks logo. You got these giant flowers. There's life to this concept art. Now, I don't love it. I I have never right. loved it. It's, de it's decent. It, it's, it, it is It is for what it is. Right. It's decent. Now, and it, and it, at least it, there's some appeal aesthetically, right? Go ahead, George. No, no, no. And I just wanted to just – now, I believe in this original piece of concept art where you mentioned all the flowers and everything. I believe that was the original Trolls location. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. So cool. Like, look, I mean, they got the water feature. 
they got the gorgeous hotel kind of entry and ho- I'll get into the the reason why the entry is so important, okay? There's a there's a huge reason as to why this is a very important component in this product and really any theme park. But this looks decent. Now, this was the old concept art that we got a few months ago. This is the new. Now, honestly, I want to ask my audience. <laughs> can you tell me with a straight face that this looks better? This concept art, this hotel, this park looks better than this. Honestly, I mean, honestly, look, compare once again, this park compared to this, which one looks better? So this new concept art, which I, I don't know, people are defending like crazy. The it's hotel a, it's has a, been- It's a bunch, it's a bunch, a bunch of show buildings. Well, yeah, you have, well, if they're show buildings, we don't even know. I mean, those could just be restaurants, shops. Yeah. Who knows? All we're seeing here is a bunch of boxes um people say that the park is bigger okay it's bigger but what did you add like it's it's not an appealing design i'm sorry it's just not that now here here's why the entrance is so important look at california adventure for example okay when you walked into dca 1.0 what a difference it made when you walked through buena vista street as opposed to the the original entrance to that park your whole energy, your whole vibe, your whole perception of DCA changed when they made Buena Vista Street, right? Mm-hmm. The entrance matters, okay? So what does Universal decide to do? They decide to cut the entrance. They, they skimp out on this entrance. You have a, basically a Hilton hotel now. You got no water feature. You can see that's gone. It's just, it, just Hilton, says, uh, it looks like you're walking into a penitentiary. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Compared to this, okay? Compared to this, Okay. Let's compare. Now, to be fair, I want to bring up this tweet from a friend of ours. Give me a second, George. Mm-hmm. I want to bring this up from a friend of ours. And she is a friend. We, 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 we like Elizabeth. So Elizabeth here says, eyeing the, ori- eyeing the original, it had, quote, now she's referring to the original concept art. So the original concept art had one splash pad, four play areas, five flat rides, one coaster, one boat ride, one to two shows, and maybe one indoor ride Shrek. The new art has um, three splash pads, six play areas, five flats, two coasters, one boat ride, one outdoor car ride, two shows, and a SpongeBob dark ride. Now, here's the thing, Elizabeth. Cool. That's great. So you added what? You added um, two splash pads. You added a couple play areas. Honestly, in my opinion, it wasn't worth the, it wasn't worth the trade off it wasn't but, worth the trade off but honestly <laughs> even if they did want to expand out for more rides or, or what have you why can't they still keep the aesthetics to it why do you have to trade trade the looks over for adding more but, well i'm i'm glad you asked that question george because we've been hearing and we've been reporting on this channel for a long time haven't we that there's been problems at universal and that even our friend theme park wizard was saying that there has been some cuts to Epic Universe. Uh, we have a source that knows people at Universal Creative who has said there's been a lot of upheaval amongst the ranks there in Universal Creative. We've even seen this from, this was from December of last year, Universal Theme Park Creative Division gutted after high, after exit of high ranking executives, okay? Several high-ranking executives at Universal Creative, the division responsible for ride shows and attractions at Universal Parks Worldwide, are heading for the exit just years before the launch of the new theme park epic universe the rap has exclusively learned. Okay? Um, basically, what they go on to say here, that they, that they took on, they, they, they took these pay packages and 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 basically instead of staying with the company it says here the packages are part of an nbc universal wide initiative offered to employees who are over 57 and or who have worked with the company for more than 10 years individuals with with knowledge of the situation however stress to us that universal creative is known for its strong talent development and succession training and uh, that they are thought are thoughtful transitions in place okay now a lot of people left with this. Okay. Now this, this completely tracks with what our source is saying, George, that there has been upheaval over there. It's very unusual 
for this many high ranking executives to leave a company pay package or not right before a major project like Epic universe opens. Okay. So we've seen this same source is telling us there's been budget cuts. Mm -hmm. Then fast forward and we get this where you can clearly see, I don't care how much mental gymnastics people want to do yeah. there. This park was budget cutted. Okay. Yeah. And it, like, that's not a coincidence. Yes. And George, you're right. It, it doesn't have to be and or either or people say, well, yeah, the hotel was, 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 was downgraded, but they added to the rest of it. Well, first of all, I would argue that he really didn't add to the rest of it. The rest of it looks more plain and boring now, but let's just say, okay, fine. Let's just, you know, for, for argument's sake, let's just say, yeah, they expanded the acreage and the park itself is better. Why do the trade-off? Uh, you know, well, why, yeah. why is it universal spending? Why can't you have the better entrance and expand? I thought universal was the, was the company that was doing everything right and was pouring money into these parks and really investing. Why is there an either or situation in the first place? Right. Mm -hmm. Look at this. And that, 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 and honestly, uh, one could even argue to say, you know, that one, uh, little sp splash pad area is I thought that was perfect. I thought that was more than enough. Now that second piece of concept art has more water which i'm not saying that's a bad thing but to me it just seems like it cuts more i it just doesn't add up to me of how this is adding more i think i think psychologically what universal was doing for the guests is saying yeah okay it's like they had the the amount of land already but they they kind of utilize that to their advantage by cutting down the overall looks and aesthetics of the park so then they could say okay yeah let's add in another one here another they probably could have done that regardless they just chose not to and they decided to use that as an excuse so they can kind of deflate what the concept is and i'm sorry and disney is guilty of it too absolutely, absolutely. disney is guilty of it too but then again as i said these people cannot just say oh disney starts off something grand and then by the time we get to it it's diluted. Well, guess what? It's right here too with Universal. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There's. I. I, I honestly cannot see what. Look, it's art is subjective. Okay, so we can all agree to disagree if that's what it is. Okay. I, personally, I don't see how this, which is a bunch of boxy buildings, is better than this. This actually has life to it. Okay. Yeah. There's actual. There's features that stand out. There's some signs of life some kinetic energy you go to this and it's a bunch of building of uh, rooftops i mean yeah the water there's more water i guess i i i don't know man i don't know and, now, and go ahead now with the the spongebob area right was that ride vehicle that they uh that they showcased at the uh the convention is that the spongebob ride vehicle that's going in there um no i believe that's for something different okay i believe that's for something different that um yeah that that's a different part because you know um uh spongebob is actually not a universal property spongebob right, is actually paramount, paramount. Yeah. yeah so uh yeah that's a different project um I don't, I, that's not for this now the lands now i'm gonna get a little positive here you know, I don't want to be all negative, you know, um, but I think the IP selection for this park is actually the best part about it, to be quite honest with you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have trolls. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Gabby's dollhouse. I think it's called um, Jurassic Park, which I'm assuming the Jurassic Park or Jurassic World section will be kind of like Dinoland USA with like the yeah. Triceratops spinner kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, we're going to have SpongeBob and. Um, what else was there? Hold on one sec. I can tell you right now. Give me just a second, guys. Um, and minions. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Everything is minions. Um, and Puss in Boots. I'm actually going to share this right here. This is actually from... Uh, uh, Shrek, uh, Shrek and Puss in Boots. That, that's that green section up there, I believe. Right, right. So let me go ahead and I'm going to share this screen with you. This is actually from... This is actually from Theme Park Wizard. But yeah, so you have on the far upper left, you have Shrek and Puss and Boots. You got Jurassic World, SpongeBob, Minions, Trolls. Now, right under Trolls, in between Trolls and the park entrance, is that Gabby's Dollhouse. 
Okay. So there, there is that little section right between those, but uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean the, the IP selection for kids, I think this is strong. I think this is very strong. I think they, I think they pick some great stuff here for, for kids. I think they'll, they'll, they'll dig the IPs for sure. I just wish they didn't cut the, the hotel, the entrance and all that. That's, that's a very important element to any theme park. Right. The, your first impression of the park is vital. That's why when they redid DCA, they knew they had to do that. There's a reason why they did it. There's a reason why they did it. And so for Universal to be like, well, we need to save money. So, or we need to move money around or whatever the, the, the logic was, we'll take it from the entrance. I think it was a bad decision, in my opinion. Now, let me ask you this, OG, because we talked a little bit about this over the phone. Um, what is your take on as far as pricing for this? Because as we were uh, as you got that message from uh, one of our viewers that this is only going to be kind of dedicated to a specific bracket of an audience, which is like, uh, you know, young age, like preschool type of and a little bit younger uh, demographic. Right. So obviously, as we had mentioned and, uh, the viewer that messaged you, you know, a teenager's not going to be into this. Honestly, you probably couldn't even get really maybe like a 10, 11, 12 year old into this. Stuff. Well, you you have a son. How old is your son, George? He's 13. You think he'd be into this? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he would probably say in part of my French, I'd probably walk, take him in there. He'd probably look around and say, dad, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the thing. There's going to be a lot of kids, young kids, like your son, 13, they're too they're already too old for this so do they pay a regular premium price ticket like how does that work i you know to be fair i don't because, think and the reason oh, why i asked oh, oh i just, just want to add on because sure. we have an amusement park out here in pennsylvania it's called um uh, kennywood for all of you who don't know and we actually have a kitty land designated area within the park which is included in the the price ticket that you just pay for the rest of the park and that's like the area you could take your your young toddlers or your preschoolers or what have you that they can't get on the big rides but when you have a specific park like this that's just dedicated for just that smaller age demographic it's that's kind of slim pickings of how much money they're actually going to be bringing in unless someone is willing to pay the money and just stand there all day and be bored. Now there's also another theme park around in my, or not a theme park, excuse me, amusement park, a couple hours from me called Knobles. And what they do is it's free admission, but you have to pay for food, beverage, and you also have to pay uh, like a tier system of like how you want to ride for the day. Like if you want like a like an express pass type of thing, like ride all day, or if you want to ride half day, you pay for that type of uh, that price value. So I wonder they could possibly maybe consider doing that. I don't know how that's going to end up uh, working out. But. I'm not really sure either. Um, and I'm trying to look on here. I'm trying to find out what the pricing is for um, Legoland. Of course. Um, my uh, oh here okay I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Give me just a second, George. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the Legoland prices um, for California. One day ticket, one or multi park. So you're looking at uh, you're looking at about seventy nine. Start it's a starting from seventy nine dollars per person. Okay, if you do the two day, you're looking at ninety nine. Um, and then they have family packages, which I don't know, man. They, they, oh, you got to go through here. So I'm not really sure what the family packages are, but you know, more or less, you're looking at like seventy nine to a hundred bucks, you know, per person. Um, I mean, if that's what Universal's charging, I don't know. I mean, we'll see how that pans out. We'll see if families think it's worth it. Because you're right. You're only going to have probably maybe one, maybe two people in your family that's going to actually be able to really enjoy this. Now, to be fair to Universal, I mean, Legoland has done pretty well for itself, and they're kind of geared towards the same audience. So I guess there's a market for it, but um, we'll see. You know, uh, I think Universal, I agree with the with the viewer that, that, uh, that sent me that message. I, I think they would have been better off making an all-ages park. 
an epic universe. And then you can incorporate these ideas for, you know, like Puss and Boots and all that into that park, yeah. but you can have elements in that park for other people too and really have a fleshed out uh, world-class resort, you know, in the, in the middle of the country in Texas. I, I'm telling you, man, I mean, that that's a prime location, a mm-hmm. prime location, and they're throwing it away on this thing. They did. Uh, in Universal, my opinion. Universal dropped the ball on that. I'm sorry. No matter how you roll the dice, they did. You know, and and I want to be very clear to to everyone that's watching or listening. These ideas that Universal has, they're not bad ideas. They're just not executed right. And I guess in that sense where people are going to say, well, yeah, but they're, they're not trying to go that route. We get that, but we're saying that's part of the issue. If 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 Universal was to build a kind of uh, – uh center of uh you, you know central uh theme park as how they do on the west coast and the east coast sort of like again they don't even have to do like a a duplicate of epic universe they could have done something completely different and then as you said og incorporate these ips for the younger generation into right. that resort that would have been perfect right. and texas honestly is a is a great spot i mean it's a huge yeah. state there's lots of real estate and They've been saying that for years for Disney to do it. Right. And Universal had the opportunity and they they grabbed it. And this is what they're giving uh, uh, Texans. <laughs> like, I, it's I don't get it. I don't either, man. And, and Universal obviously wants to get in on that, like, you know, that Legoland, like Six Flags regional money, I guess. Um, I, I've been saying it for a long time. I think that's brand damage. And I'm sorry. I know people disagree with me, and that's fine. You can disagree with me respectfully. It's all good. It's brand damage. Look, here, here's the thing. Do you remember in the 90s, the, the direct-to-video animated sequels that Disney used to do? Yes. Okay. Yes. Those those animated features that they just they that were cheaply made and sort of thrown onto video, I think damaged Disney Animation's brand. I do. Because you're you're creating animated movies of a lesser quality. Now you can argue like you do with the universal thing. Well, it's a different product though. You know, it's, it's direct to video and it doesn't matter. A f- the family, the general audience, the normies, they look at it apple to apple. It's an animated film and an animated film. So the one you release in theaters and the one that you put in a video, families are going to look at both of them as the same thing. Basically, they're not like us that we deep dive and peel the, peel the layers of the onion. People don't think like that. They think this is an, this is a Disney movie. And they're going to judge it based on that. And they're going to judge it based on comparing that to the ones in theaters. Now, same here with Universal. Oh, well, this is a this is a kid park. So, you know, th- and it's small. So they're not going to judge it like they would Epic Universe. That's not, no. What's going to happen is because you have one theme park and another theme park, the normies are going to see both of them as Universal theme parks. It's apple to apples comparison. So when you have a bunch of these kind of cheap budgeted parks around the country, which I think is what Universal wants to do, you water your brand down. Universal starts to become known as Mm -hmm. another Cedar Fair or another one of these kind of of, uh, amusement park companies. And they're no longer that premium product. There's a reason why Disney has remained a premium product in this space for such a long time, because their parks are far and few between. It's an experience. It's like you come from you come from around the world sometimes to visit a Disney park, right? You start you start peppering these all through the country, and I'm telling you, you become like every other amusement park. And I don't know why people don't see that, but hey, you know, yeah. I mean, teach their own, man. I yeah. just that that's my feeling on it. I hope to God Disney never does it. I would be really really disappointed if Disney goes down this route. Well, and I wanted to ask you about that. I personally, and I, which I hope, yeah, Disney doesn't go down that route. But do you think that in time that Disney could then kind of learn sort of kind of from Universal's mishap, so to speak, and missed opportunity? Do you think Disney in time could potentially put something in Texas? I, I would I would love to have a Disney park in Texas, but make a Disney park, like a park. An actual that, Disney it, park. Yeah, yes. not, none of this watered down, diluted type of pop up it, it reminds me of a like a pop-up store basically kind that's what of, it yeah. seems like it's well, like it's supposed to be like a name brand store but it's like it's just it, it's like a <laughs> okay i'm gonna i'm gonna say this you know like when you said uh um uh magic kingdom at walt disney world is like the live action version of disneyland yeah that's that this is 
that's exactly what this is to me. Or this is the direct to video sequel to Universal Orlando. Exactly. Yeah. You know, basically. And, and look, there's a place for these kind of parks. I think Legoland, cool. You know, do your thing, Legoland. And if Universal wants to dip into that, cool. I just think that this is more of an ancillary kind of tack on to my larger vacation kind of thing, like a water park and not something that should be a standalone park in a new market. And that's all I'm saying. Exactly. So you want to build this park universal, do it, but do it at your current existing resort and have an attack on thing and add on to what you currently have. Don't, don't go putting it in a new market as a standalone thing. It's a, it's a bad decision, man. In my opinion, in my opinion, and look, it's probably gonna do very well. I'm sure, you know, I just think it does a lot of brand damage. I think that it, it kind of leads to them becoming um, kind of your run of the mill theme par- uh, amusement park company. Um, if you go down this road and you start building these everywhere. So we'll see what happens, man. But yeah, like I said before, though, I really hope Disney doesn't do this. No, I really, I really, that would be terrible. Yeah, man. that's, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, with with so much criticism that the the company is uh, kind of taking on now, I I I would hope that they wouldn't. I would think that they wouldn't. I don't, you know, I don't really think that Bob Iger would want to put something like that on his plate right now. Um, but even down the road in time, like for the next CEO or CEOs uh, after him, yeah, I hope that they take it like a different route, a different perspective. Even I'm going to even go even a little more ballsy, even for the Disneyland forward stuff. Oh yeah. You know, they better never, ever give us this diluted water down bullshit. No, No, you can't, man. They can't. No. And I'm telling you, and I keep saying this and no one believes me, George, we have sources that are telling us, uh, we know who the source is. Mm -hmm. He's a friend Mm -hmm. of ours. Yes. Has been saying there is issues at universal creative. There are, um, but, budgetary drama all this stuff okay we saw the article from mice chat um a few months ago that was saying the same thing about epic universe budget cuts mm-hmm. our friend theme park universe has even told me there have been budget cuts with certain things over on epic universe mm-hmm. this is happening now we get this concept art which is seriously a downgrade from the original art i don't care people can spin it any way they want but obviously there it's a budgetary thing because like you said george they had to they had to strip the hotel down basically nothing to to add another play area or two right <laughs> and another splash pad it's ridiculous obviously this is a budgeted thing this is happening at universal the, the, the this is after epic universe i'm telling you it's gonna be a much more budgeted focused universal and i, I don't know if, if fans want to admit that if fans want to acknowledge that if it's just inconvenient or uncomfortable, it is what it is, but that's what's going down right now. And I'm not saying that that's not happening at Disney, you know? I mean, you know, for, for, to yeah. be fair, yeah. We, we, well, at Disney, it's arguably even worse because we don't get no project. We get what if and maybe. <laughs> exactly. So I'm not just shitting on Universal. I'm just being honest, you know well, what I mean? And, and to a little bit of Universal's credit, because we have touched upon this notion on the channel before that they don't have any kind of younger kitty rides for what right have you. so this does fit into that demographic that universal needs however what they're doing is they're either doing a, a theme park that's dedicated to teens and adults or to younger kids they're not meshing them together that's the thing and that's what makes and we talked about this with jay Shear earlier today on the video we had with him where disney is really you can bring your four-year-old and your 97 year old grandma and everyone can have fun And that's the problem with Universal. That's what's holding Universal back from being the next Disney is that you can't do that. Like, I'm not a thrill junkie. I don't want to be thrown around, spun around, and all this stuff. So Universal, to me, it's kind of a lot of it's slim pickings. But what am I going to do? What's the alternative? I'm going to go to this thing? Well, like it's, you know, like that's now, um, now it's like a, like a baby park. Like I, I'm too old for that shit. You know what I'm saying? There's no, like there's very little middle ground. And I think Disney excels in that middle ground a lot more than universal. Again, not saying universal doesn't have middle ground stuff. They don't have as much of it though as Disney. And, and, right. and you're right, George, this is these concepts that they have in this park might be really, really cool. What they should be doing is taking these concepts and maybe incorporating those into the existing parks and making those existing parks a more fleshed out experience for more demo and broadening your demo out. And instead, it's very much like, well, this is for the young teens and early or, or you know, the teens to 20s crowd, this park. And then this one's for babies. Why can't we? 
get a park that encompasses all of it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's exactly. the problem here. So yeah. we'll see, man, we'll see. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not impressed, dude. I'm not impressed. And the name of oh, the name that <sighs> that's, it's almost cringy to say, and I know that seems like I, I'm like over exaggerating, but it's just like, if I was to have a young child and it's like, Hey, guess what we're going to do for this summer? We're going to go to universal kids. It's like, honestly, people are probably just going to say, we're going to go to the universal park in Texas. Yeah. That's all they're going to say. They're not going to well, call it universal kids. And like I said before, it sounds like, like a, it sounds like a fucking Burger King, uh, kids <laughs> meal. Like, you know, they say, you know, what's in your Burger King kids meal, <laughs> you know, it's like, I know silly rabbit well, tricks are for kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly well that's the thing too is like a lot of people say well th- that way people know it's for kids it's like come on you guys Th- there's all kinds of product out there whether it be um animation whatever um you know i, I mentioned the disney afternoon mm-hmm. uh, even legoland which is yeah, there's a very different so, ways you could put stuff y- you can make a creative name without having the word kids in it and you can convey to the general public who is not stupid that this thing is for kids like i said Legoland has not had a problem conveying that that park is for young children and they don't have kids in the title. Why can't universal do that? They can't. This is a, this is a lazy, creatively lazy title. Or even if just to say they wanted to go with kids for whatever reason, at least make the logo look nice looking, (laughs) at least make it look appealing to the naked eye to say, you know what? This is something that, you know, looks really cool. I mean, even the aesthetics of the logo itself looks looks very uh, cheap. Cheap, yeah. Let's just call yeah. it what it is. It's cheap. Yeah. So we'll see, man. We'll see. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna get shit for this, man. I oh, I got a lot of heat on Twitter because I said the artwork looked budgeted. Now I will say this. So I want to give a shout out to Elizabeth Gates though, because she kind of called me out on something, and I want to I want to say that I, she was absolutely right on this. In my tweet. I said, uh, budget cuts, um, it looks like budget cuts hit, well, let, me, let me pull up my tweet. That way we can just kind <laughs> of, I, I, I want to show this because course, I, yeah. I, I, I want to be fair. And I honestly think that like, this is a fair point that Elizabeth made. Um, give me one moment, George. I'm going to share, I'm going to share my screen real quick because she's a friend of the channel. We like Elizabeth a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth, you're always welcome to come on the channel too, if you, if you want, you know, but, um, it says, I said here, I said here, the old left compared to the new, right. They budget cut the hell out of this thing. Okay. So here's the thing, this whole video, we are obviously speculating. Now I am very certain on my speculation that budgets were cut with this thing. Um, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very confident that this that's the case here but again i'm not a universal executive so i can't confirm anything just like nobody else can they can't confirm where the one way or the other so my tweet here when i said they budget cut the hell out of this thing it was a definitive statement and elizabeth called me out on that and saying hey you're entitled to your opinion but that statement makes it sound like that's a fact and she's right so honestly she's right on that's a fair point so we can't say with 100 percent certainty that there are budget cuts with this park Okay, it's our opinions, but based on the evidence, I'd say it points to it pretty strongly. So honestly, uh, I'm just gonna go a little bit balls to the wall on this. Honestly, it it seemed like the budget cut was even there, even with the first piece of concept art. Right, (laughs) really, honestly, it just seemed like they just went in with this assumption that you know what, we're gonna do this cheap. We're gonna make it known that it's cheap because. We're just going to give the impression that it's like, okay, it's for younger kids. It's for the younger generation. So we don't have to try as hard. See, and that's I hate the that. way it's coming across. Yes. And that's, and that's perpetuated by a lot of fans. And that's why I say there's kids programming from the nineties that were produced by Steven Spielberg. I am so sick of hearing this, that it's for kids. So therefore they can, they can accept a watered down lesser quality project. That's baloney. Walt Disney never did that. He never talked down to children or watered down his, his animation, you know, for kids. Cause they, they won't know any better. That's a terrible mindset to have. You create oh, quality product for kids too. And we've seen it over and over again. And a, and a great example, a modern example right now is Bluey. Mm-hmm. Bluey. It's a quality show. It's a it's well written. 
it's for kids, but they didn't, they didn't, they didn't skimp on the quality though. So it can be done, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's where I stand with it. And, you know, look, you know, we'll get shit for George, but you know, we're going to be honest. So that's where we stand. So whatever. Yeah. Yep. It is what it is. It is what it is. But George, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. If you let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. <laughs> you could also find me on Instagram <laughs> under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> And thank you all so, so much for watching. Comment down below. Hey, look, if you disagree with us, it's all good. And I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people on Twitter were defending this concept art and everything, and that's totally fine. But comment down below. We would love to hear from you, whether you agree with us, whether you disagree with us. We welcome all opinions here on the channel. As you're long just as wrong. You're... <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Just... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. No, no, I'm kidding aside. Okay. You're, you're... <laughs> we welcome all opinions on here. And as long as you're civil in the comments, we'd love to hear from you. So if every comment we get is, hey, OG and George, you're wrong, that's all good. Just be civil about it, and we're, yeah. we're happy over here. So thank you all so much for your support, and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, everybody.